Till now we were discussing the determination of stresses under load, which can be a point load or it can be a strip load. It can be a uniformly distributed load on a circular area. It can be a uniformly distributed load on a rectangle area. In such cases, we have covered a few examples as well. Now, one thing that's pending now is stress under load on an irregular area. Now, the every structure that you see around need not be of a proper shape. It need not be a proper circle. It need not be a proper line load. It need not be a proper rectangle. So, usually, the loads coming over the soil tends to have an irregular shape. So, in such cases, we depend what is called as a new marks chart. The new marks chart is for uniformly loaded areas of any shape, any irregular shape. Now, the basis of this lies in the concept of vertical stress below the center of a circular area. We have already discussed that, where you define sigma Zb as Ic into Q. That's the base, and we kind of extrapolate that to fit into any shape. Now, from this equation, I see we have defined it to be 1 minus 1 by 1 plus r by z square raised to 3 by 2. Rearranging that equation, you can get r by z as this format. So, this can be used to apply to new marks chart. Now, fundamentally, that chart is something that consists of a number of circles and a set of radial lines. So, what you get is uh, an array of concentric meshes, just like the spider's web. Each unit of mesh causes equal vertical stress at the center of the chart. And in Newmark's chart, if the length of one unit is z, then the radius of the ring is r. The area inside each circle will be sigma z by q, which means area inside the first circle will be 0 0.1, the second circle will be 0 0.2, etc. Now you will get a better idea by looking at uh, looking at a picture shown to the next slide. So a new marks chart looks like this. This you have different concentric circles, you have different radial lines stretching outward. So you have radius and z marked here, like we said. The length of one unit is z, then the radius of the ring is r, and the area inside each circle will be sigma z by q. So that's the concept of Newmark's chart. Now, fundamentally, what you need, what you need to do is consider a circle of radius r1, as you can see in this picture. You have r1 here, and divide it into 20 equal sectors. I'm sorry about the editing mistake. It's not 2 hyphen, it's 20. 20 equal sectors. Now, once you have divided R1 radius circle into 20 equal sectors, as you can see in this picture, the vertical stress at a point P at a depth Z below the center of the circle will be 1 by 23rd, 1 by 20th of the load due to the entire circle. So each sector will contribute 1 20th of the load to the point P because you have divided the entire circle into 20 divisions. So sigma ZP will be 1 by 20th of IC into Q where IC is the previous equation. So based on this concept, uh, you can look, look, at, look at a picture here. There's 1 by 20th of R1 marked and there's 1 by 20th of R2 also marked. So you can have different concentric circles and in this particular picture you have two concentric circles each divided into 20 sectors. Now the idea of new marks chart is quite simple. Let's think that there's a plan of a building or a foundation drawn on a tracing paper to a certain scale. Now what you do here is this plan drawn on tracing paper is kept over the new marks chart. Now, the new marks chart is shown here. It has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. number of concentric circles here and they are divided into 20 sectors. So what you do is you place this plan which is drawn on a tracing paper or a butter paper. You keep it over the new marks chart. Right? So it's <coughs> drawn on tracing paper and it's 
location of point P where the stress is to be determined is marked on it as P right so the location of point P where the stress is to be determined you mark the point as P and you move the tracing paper in such a way that P comes over the center of the chart for instance in this case P could be here or here in this case and you move the tracing paper over this new marks chart such a way that the point of interest is kept above the center of the new marks chart and then what you do is you count the number of meshes covered by the plan for instance you have uh, I'm not able to count here but one two three four five six seven in a line 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, etc. You count the number of meshes, complete meshes, covered by the plan. So in this case, it could be around 30, 35 meshes, which is consumed within the plan. The plan is shown in the dotted line. Now the vertical stress, sigma is at P, is equal to I N into Q, where I N, the influence factor, is 1 by C S, where C is the number of concentric circles covered, S is the number of radial lines covered, and I, the common value is usually 0 0.005, which corresponds to 200 pieces of the circular segment, usually practiced. So, uh, the number of meshes covered is given as N, and I is usually taken as 0 0.005, so you get I, n and then you have q which is already given in the question so q is nothing but the uniformly distributed load so in short when you have an irregular plan which is loaded by a uniformly distributed load you can use the new marks chart to find i and n based on which you'll get the sigma is at p at the point p of target which is kept above the center of the new marks chart so that's the idea